Okay, so we all know the problem while you're out flying um, and the sunlight's too bright and you have a job to see the display on your screen. Um, not so much on the smart controller, but certainly on other controllers that use smartphones, things like that. Um, or alternative is when you're out filming for a client and the client wants to see uh, your live video as you're shooting it. Um, it's a bit difficult to have them leaning over your shoulder looking at your screen. So uh, here we have a solution and in this video I'm going to show you how I made it and how you can make your own basically. So what we've got is uh, a remote demand, uh, command center for drone use. Um, I'll explain how everything's put together and the features it's got but basically once I connect any controller um, including the smart controller via HDMI into the HDMI input and basically what I've got now is I've got a replication of my screen uh, right in front of me 15.6 uh, inch so this is exactly uh, what the drone sees and it's an exact replication of the uh, the controller so basically it saves people going over your shoulder and things like that and it will work in uh, any type of light. Um, what I'm currently doing is designing a, a sunshade that will go over the top which will make it even better. But what I'll do, I'll talk you through the different components and then you can watch the video and see how you can make your own. So as I say, here's the smart controller and that's currently connected to the drone. So HDMI out of the back of there go straight into the HDMI input on the command center and at the moment my built-in battery is showing at 72 percent and if I press that again it'll show me it's giving me 12.4 volts on here we have a USB socket so I can charge the controllers on the go and another voltmeter there and that's just basically a 12 volt marine output and here is the uh, cold shoe adapter so I can mount the Hollyland uh, wireless unit. Just here is the charging input. So that's where we can literally, without having to take the internal battery out, can charge it up. And there we have the screen all fitted and working. And the charger that we're using with this unit is basically this one. It's a balanced charger, um, ideally designed for this job. Um, very very cheap as well so uh, yeah should do a good job so at the moment I've just got HDMI out from the controller and straight into the HDMI socket on here but what I can do um, and I use this quite a lot is I have a Hollyland um, wireless transmitter system and this is good for about 300 meters and all this does basically you have a remote um, you have a TX unit and an RX unit and there's a hot shoe adapter on here so that can slide on there and then literally HDMI from this straight into the unit there so therefore this uh, command center could be up to 300 meters away from the drone controller so that's a really really handy um, facility uh, so the first job we're going to do with the uh, case is we're going to put the framework in um, you can use any kind of scrap wood for this um, because you're not going to see any of it um, although I would suggest that you use something of a reasonable thickness um, this one's about 12 mil um, mainly because you're going to have to get some screws into that to hold the base uh, and the plastics down so you don't want anything that's too thin because you just won't be able to screw to it so we've, we've got two thicknesses uh, two depths should I say like so and um, the idea being that we're going to cut this to size and that's going to go in the base like that and we're going to line all the way around the edge and then one bar in the middle for strengthening and then the thinner piece is going to go in the lid like that and then we'll have the plastic over the top of it so again with this one you need to remember that it's not going to be too deep you don't want it sticking out further than the lid so measure the distance between the top and the front there and then take away a little bit just to allow for the plastic because you don't want any of that showing um, this is all going to be glued in and same with the bottom now we can't obviously screw it to the lid because we don't want the screw showing on the other side so you're going to have to use plenty glue and um, something like hard as nails or something that will do the job um, it's not going to take a lot of weight but it doesn't want to come loose once it's all assembled so that's going to be the next stage we're going to cut this to size and then glue it all in and leave it overnight to set um, one thing that you do have to remember is that when you put one of these pieces in the middle you're going to have to um, cut a hole ready for uh, a USB adapter which we'll show you very shortly. So we're going to get on and cut that. 
So with the framework, um, we've got our four pieces. What you need to do is um, drill a couple of little pilot holes just in the edges like so. Um, mainly because with it being plywood, it does tend to split if you put uh, nails directly into it. So for this case I've got two pieces at 400 and two pieces at uh, 220 like so. and then I've obviously got the middle piece as well uh, but we'll deal with that once the uh, this frames in the case so then all we're going to do and again it doesn't have to be anything fancy because you're not going to see it but more than anything it needs to be quite secure um, we don't want this case coming apart in transit so we'll get our nails ready like so you don't need any uh, particular fancy skills to do any of this. I think uh, pretty much anyone could cope with this in a, even a basic workshop. So, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, glue it all up like so and then clamp it and then leave it overnight uh, in the case to set. Okay so there we have it, the uh, basic framework, again nothing special, um, pretty solid and all we're going to do is make sure it's reasonably square although it's not crucial, uh, close enough for me. More than anything you need a nice uh, surface on the top there, you want everything to match, you don't want any bumps and dips in it. So that's just a basic fly uh, plywood frame, so 220 and 400 and then the middle bit is going to go in there once the case is all together but again we're going to have to drill a hole in that um, to put one of the USB adapters which you'll, uh, you'll see very shortly so now we're going to put the uh, framework into the case so with the uh, frame you, you can't put too much glue on uh, I'm just using hard as nails um, doesn't matter how much you put on the more the better because what you don't want is you don't want this to come apart uh, in transit so we've just put a little coating on the bottom bit there to start with and I'm going to drop it in there and uh, notice it doesn't go right to the edges and there's a reason for that and that's because there's a slight um, curve on the bottom of the case so if you go right to the edge it won't sit tight so that's basically in place and then what I'm going to do I'm going to run the glue gun around the bottom and give it loads of extra glue and then just leave it overnight to set uh, before we move on to the next step Okay, so you can see there that uh, I've got the base in and I've put loads and loads of uh, glue in there. It doesn't look very nice, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to see it. So the more glue you get in, then the better it's going to be. We want that to be absolutely solid. So even a knock and it won't come loose and uh, it'll last you for years. So there we go. Um, we've got the base all glued in place and uh, the top frame is now in place all glued in I'm just going to run a bit more glue around the edge and then we're going to walk away and leave that until tomorrow and then it'll be nice and solid so following morning and everything's set nicely so there's the framework in uh, for the lid and in the bottom the framework's solid all glued in Again, as I say, it looks a bit messy, but don't worry about that because none of that is visible once we put the plastic on the top. The main thing is, is to get as much glue as you possibly can in so it's solid and never moves. And what I've done, I've divided it into two sections. And the middle piece has been put in now and we've drilled two holes. The first hole is to take the USB socket and the second one is just to pass cables through uh, because we're going to put the battery in one side and then all the other controls will be in the other side so uh, we we need to remember to do that before we actually glue the uh, middle panel in so next stage is to start uh, cutting the um, plastic top and I'll show you how we do that so the plastic we're going to use it's uh, an ABS material 
um, really good quality and it's got a bit of a pattern on it there like, um, but it's three three millimeters thick okay so we don't want to go too thin because it just won't uh, be strong enough then we don't want to go too thick um, so this is about right three millimeters is perfect and this comes in uh, one big sheet so out of this piece we'll get the top and the bottom bit and what we do is to make sure we get it right because you only get one go at this um, I make a template up this is one I've started and this is just a, a hardboard template and what we can do is we, we cut it um, to the right size we get the radius correct for the corners so this this case takes about a 30 uh, 30 millimeter radius and then what we can do you see we can try it in the uh, case before we actually cut the plastic so say you only get one go and um, we've got a hole there cut ready that's a 20 millimeter cut uh, hole and that's basically to take the power switch the on off switch so uh, we'll wire that in um, at some point so next thing we're going to do is cut the holes for the usb sockets and we'll show you how we do that um, in the meantime i'll just show you that um, we've got this about right so uh, this will basically just go in like so there we go and it's a nice tight fit so you'll never get it exactly right around the edge but that's not that's not too important um, as, as long as you know it's a good fit and it should technically be the same for the top there we go so the top actually if you look at that is slightly larger so when we cut that piece I'll allow a little bit of extra for that one so the battery that I'm using in this is uh, 12 volt 7 amp power so that's plenty to uh, power this screen for some considerable time and uh, that's mounted in the bottom just like so and what I shall do is use some timber framing just to put over the top to keep it in place and then we'll do a temporary uh, uh, mounting on that so that if in the event that the battery ever has to be changed then we can just take off the top and get access to it but basically we need to make sure that, that battery doesn't move anywhere we also need to make sure that I can get at the terminals because we'll need to connect those uh, at some stage. So remember I was talking about making the uh, the actual plastic components and we've made a uh, hardboard template which we have started and so basically we've got our template and we've got our sheets of plastic and this has been cut out using this template as such so this is the uh, piece for the lid so I've allowed a couple of extra millimeters because the lid's slightly larger and then the piece for the bottom is here so again that's from the template like so and then once we've got all the holes marked out on the template we'll transfer them transfer them to the uh, the plastic and uh, this stuff's ever so easy to work with um, you can't use the router on it because it uh, it breaks the router bits um, the ABS does so it has to be hand cut but it's really easy to cut and all we use is a straight edge and a good old trusty Stanley knife and um, basically keep that clamp down and score it um, a dozen or so times and when you're almost through the plastic you can turn it over and then just snap it and you get a nice clean break and then when it comes to the corners um, these are rounded off I've used a uh, bandsaw to cut the uh, to cut the corners and then just a bit of sandpaper just to make them nice and round and don't forget to take the uh, the plastic burr off the bottom so it's a nice neat finish uh, so yeah next stage is to mark out the rest of the holes and then uh, finish the plastics okay so the hardest part and um, that you've got to be really really careful with is cutting the opening for the screen on the top um, it's very difficult because you, you you'll need to drill some small holes in the four corners and then cut it with a knife very very carefully without uh, slipping um, because if you mark it it's going to be ruined and the biggest problem you've got is getting the size right um, now we know it's going to fit in the lid there we go so that's how it's going to fit with the screen behind it and uh, the screen that uh, I've chosen for this one um, it's a full HD screen and uh, I'll just show you where it's going to go so this one's a 15.6 inch screen and it's going to sit something like that and then uh, I'll show you very shortly how we're going to fix it into that. 
Um, now this one is powered by USB 3 which is on the side there so again I'll show you how we're going to wire that one up um, and it's going to be powered by our internal battery which again we've already seen and that's in place in there so we're going to be able to turn the power on and the screen will come on automatically and then we're going to have a built-in socket on the top of here uh, where we can plug the charger in to charge the battery up there'll also be a uh, battery level meter so we can keep an eye on the battery level okay so we're now into the wiring stage and um, we've got uh, all the components fitted to the case so you're going to want uh, a decent soldering gun and some terminal connectors um, it's pretty straightforward it's not rocket science um, all the sockets are labeled positive and negative so it's a case of matching all the positives and all the negatives and on here I've used some bullet connectors and insulated uh, jointing sleeves and what I should do on those when I've finished I'll put a drop of uh, hot glue on them just to save any uh, movement when it's all done up in the case so all the positives all the negatives together um, this is our charging point so that's where we're going to charge the battery so that's going to go direct to the battery from the battery it's going to come to the power switch and then obviously feed all the uh, adapters there and in the middle of all that we've also got our voltmeter so that's going to be connected to the battery uh, direct as well because that's going to show the condition of the battery and the charging status so that's all the wiring in place and just recapping on the front just so we'll go through it all again so here's our voltmeter and that's going to show the condition of the battery and the charging capacity that's our charging input master on off switch and here we have our USB outlets uh, 12 volt outlet and in this one uh, we can get to it is uh, our HDMI well it's a bit tight because it's new but that's our HDMI so that's where the HDMI is going to go in from our uh, remote controller uh, and as I say we'll explain all that once uh, we've got it all up and running and working so inside the battery is all mounted and secured in place and here we have a double USB outlet so that's going to be fed from the uh, master switch as well that's going to enable me to put a permanent uh, USB connector in to feed the power to the monitor so got all the wiring done and uh, as I said earlier on just uh, put some glue around the terminals um, just to save uh, any coming apart uh, it does help and the power from the battery goes through a terminal block that's all housed securely I know it's only low voltage but we don't want any shorts and what I've done is I've included an inline fuse as well uh, between the battery and all the sockets so that's now connected to the battery temporarily whilst we check it all so you can see battery is by terminals and there we have our power meter that's showing and this particular one is really quite good because it shows you 88% of the battery but if you press the button it'll actually turn it off so it's not draining um, and I think one second, if I just press it there we go so it's also showing you the voltage so 12.1 volts press it again goes off press it again it shows you the battery strength is at 88% so that's really good um, again the charging socket is there and that's all connected up now um, sockets on there so HDMI 12 volt marine and under there we have the USB that's all working so you can charge your controller on the go and the main power switch is there so when we turn that off that's it it's all off and then press that and that's it so there well it's, as it sits in that state there's no drain on the battery